in the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi also... No, Mike Sempervivi is not here. I just said that in the opening segment. Lance Storm is joining us here today. From his... From his... His, uh, his old Storm Wrestling Academy. I see for some reason you set back up again today. Just felt like getting some exercise, putting the ring together. Yeah, I had to have something to do with the... Uh, this is actually the start of year two for me, being home from work due to COVID. Wow. This is 366 day. Holy smokes. 366 days ago you were sent home. And here we are. Well, we got a lot to get into here today. And I I actually want to mention something about the, the WWE Hall of Fame, which you should be in, Lance. I mean, Well, if they keep doing two years at once, maybe I will get yeah, in. Yeah, this is the thing here. So if you don't know everybody, WWE announced that they're going to be doing a 2021 Hall of Fame class. Okay. Now, before we get into the Hall of Fame, I should mention here that this is the schedule for WrestleMania week. All right? (laughs) It's longer than a week. We have got Monday Night Raw. We have got the Hall of Fame the following Tuesday, the next day. Then we have two days of NXT. We have the Wednesday USA show and the Thursday show on the WWE Network. We have SmackDown on Friday. We have WrestleMania on Saturday. We have WrestleMania on Sunday. We have Monday Night Raw on Monday. And we have NXT on Tuesday. Raw, Hall of Fame, NXT, NXT, SmackDown, Mania, Mania, Raw, NXT. That's your lineup for WrestleMania weekend. Nine days. It's all about providing content. Okay? Now... Here's the Hall of Fame story. So last year, there was supposed to be a Hall of Fame, and a number of individuals, we had Batista, the NWO, which was Hogan, Nash, Hall, and Waltman, the Bellas, JBL, British Bulldog, and Jushin Thunder Liger. They were all going to be inducted last year, and then what happened happened. So what they have decided to do which I cannot for the life of me figure out, is this year they're going to induct everybody that didn't go in last year. And then on top of that, a brand new class is going to go in this year. So remember how we've always talked about how, you know, I won't mention anybody's names, but like we're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here. We're having (laughs) multiple time inductees. We're having, you know, people that in any real Hall of Fame would not be Hall of Famers. And it's just like we're going to... There's a finite number of human beings that can go into this Hall of Fame. So it was like, wow, we didn't do one last year. Well, now we've saved a year. We'll put all of those people from last year in this year. They'll get their moment in the sun. And then next year we'll do another another class. No, they're doubling up. Like, I'm going to be in this Hall of Fame at some point. (laughs) Don't hold your breath on that one. But, uh, yeah, they're getting a lot of bodies in there. We're doubling down. And they have to change the way they're doing the speeches, I assume, or this will be like a 19-hour show. Like, those shows go, what, five hours at least anyway for just to get all the speeches in? If they have two full classes with inductee and inductor speeches, it's like, that's a long show. So they've announced that Molly Holly is going in. She's the first inductee into the extra Hall of Fame class going in this year. I guess it's very important. It's very important, I guess, to them to have a 2020 Hall of Fame. They don't want it to go from 2019 to 2021. So I guess we have to fill in 2020. These are the things that they obsess about. And then we add the 2021 on top of that. But anyway, the Hall of Fame is going to air on Peacock. So if you... If you want to see it, uh, you can't see it on the network. It's The network's going to be history over many a weekend. So. Only in the U.S., Brian. Well, yes, but I mean, everything is only in the U.S. I mean, if you're anywhere else in the world, you just keep watching everything on the WWE Network. So in the U.S., Peacock for the Hall of Fame, Peacock for WrestleMania, and your, your network is just, it's no more. So that's the update there. I don't know what else you want to add. I'm just... Surprise. I am very happy for Molly Holly. She is one of the nicest people you will ever meet in your entire life. And someone who I think, because she was a bit more of a trailblazer in that she was wrestling before the Trish Stratus boom, which I think everybody sort of credits as the big boom period for WWE. 
uh, from the Attitude Era, where I think Molly was doing things even before that. I'm I'm very happy for her and uh, looking forward to hearing her speech. I would imagine it'll be very sweet and credit a whole bunch of people other than herself. So the other the other quick WWE note here, and Lance, I'm sure could talk about this a little bit, is they they need a new uh, head of talent relations. So, I guess, I, I only imagine the meeting going something like this. Vince goes, we need a new head of talent relations. Get me JR! And someone goes, brother, he's with AEW. He's not available right now. Ah! Give me, give me Johnny Ace! And in fact, John Laurinaitis. John Laurinaitis is back as the head of talent relations. He's, he was the, the head of talent relations from 2004 to 2012. He replaced Ross... He did the job. 2012, they got rid of the guy. And then, I guess, well, I can't think of anybody else who could possibly head talent relations than the guy that we had a decade ago. So he's coming back, and there you go. Any thoughts on Johnny Ace? Big Johnny. I've always had a good relationship with Johnny, but and he was actually doing, like, he was our WCW talent relations guy during the invasion like, we never, never is a bit of a stretch, but we almost never dealt with JR when it came to our contracts and what we were doing that first year. We all went through Johnny, and then Johnny would go through JR. So he certainly has the experience, but it seems weird to go back rather than forward. But it's probably a very unique position that, unless they're actively training replacements, it's like it's probably hard to just throw someone in there that's going to have a relationship with talent as well as understand the job. It's. It's in probably a very unique, weird position. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.